In this video, we're going to look at how to analyze some descriptive statistics for a data set, you know, things like the mean, standard deviation. So first, let's open a data set. So I'm going to pick the star data set. And again, I can call it whatever I want. Uh, a Well, let's see, let's just import it right now, right? Pretty easy to import it. We can see, you know, this math variable, there's this reading score variable. Now, notice it's called star if i want i can rename that and a neat way to rename data sets by the way if i just want to call it a really common name by the way that you'll often see people give to to data sets is df for data frame if that's like the main thing you're working with for that project or that assignment you can just call it df that's your main data frame so i could just say df and it's a new variable that i'm assigning it equals star notice it's all caps star that's what it's currently called, right? That's how I imported it. So if I just do this now, I mean, it's sort of like a copy of it, right? It's like, so DF is talking about that, that same star uh, data set. So if I now do view, view DF, you know, again, I can view. All right, yes, again, same thing. It's really just the same thing. But now uh, the reason is because often it's, it's easier to type than this, especially if you're going to do it a lot. If you're going to do it over and over again, you want to uh, be wise and choose something that you won't mind typing out, like having to do all caps and things like that. So anyway, the simplest way, the simplest way to get some basic summary stats of your data set, of your data frame, is the command, very creatively named, summary. So summary, parentheses, df, or again, star would have worked too, but I'm just using df. Summary df, let's see what it does. I'm gonna run that, and here's what shows up under summary df. For each of those seven variables, race, birth year, you know, and so on, it's giving me some basic stats over here. It's giving me the minimum, also, it's giving me the maximum, right? So race varies from one to six. I mean, the average doesn't really mean much here for a categorical variable like this, but it's giving me the average. It's also giving me the median, things like that. And again, for race, it doesn't really mean much, but for something like math score, for example, it sort of does have meaning, right? We know the maximum, that's the highest score somebody got. It's the lowest score somebody got. That's the average, the mean. And it's also giving me the median, you know, again, two different ways to measure sort of the central tendency, as we learned earlier, in a data set. But it's not really, this, this command doesn't really give me uh, the, any measure of spread, right? How spread out are the math scores? What's the standard deviation? So we'll talk about that shortly. But one thing to note here, and again, same here with, with female, it's giving me all those things, right? The median, again, this... See, for binary variables like female, like in this case where it's the maximum is one, the minimum is zero. So it's really just everyone has a value of zero or one. In that case, this average is representing the percentage of people who are at one. But that's just more of, you know, if you average a bunch of zeros and ones. In either case, though, more importantly, these NAs are talking about how many are missing. That's not available, right? So data was not available for these many, 454 out of these 6,000 observations, there was you know a handful of missing ones. But anyway, so here's what here's here's the other cool thing to do here. Uh, if you look at this data set, let's say we wanted to zoom into this one column, this math column over here. If we wanted to make this column, this this set of math scores, its own vector, if you will, it's just like you know it has a bunch of math scores available that actually already that object already exists and here's how you can call on that object just that one vector df or whatever your data set is called and then the dollar sign basically says to invoke whatever variable within that data set so here if i just click on math or i can type in math this this over here df dollar sign math is referring to the math column that math variable within df the data set. So if I, what happens if I just run that? Well, it's basically giving me that column. It's giving me all the math scores, right? That column is just a bunch of math scores. And notice here we could see some of them are NAs, right? They're not available. It's just like we sort of knew from, from looking at the summary. So, and the cool thing is you could also save this as an object. I could just call it X. X equals this. Run that. Oh, that appears here. X is just all those uh, all those math scores, right? Just that column. And a really common thing to do is often people will literally call it math, 
right? Uh, or, or something like that, right? I, I'm, what, what I'm doing here is I'm creating a new variable called math. Right, let's run that. And that variable math is basically, specifically, that math column of this data set, right? So now whenever you talk about math, blah, 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 within your uh, other variables and everything here, it's specifically referring to math. Now we don't have to type in DF dollar sign math every time. You can just type in math if you've saved math like this before. So now let's see what happens if I just do mean. Mean is a built-in command uh, within R. And so if I just do mean math, Huh, that should give me the average of this math guy, right? Let's see what happens. Oh man, it gave me NA, not available. Why might that be? Well, as I said, we can see here within that math column, there's all these missing ones and how, how do you, missing values. And how do you average a bunch of numbers and a bunch of letters, right? You can, even if one is missing, the average of all these is the one missing. And so that's why, uh, that's why that gave me NA or not available for the average. But the cool thing is, so this mean, is a, it's a function in Stata, which means it has this input, but you can also then do comma, and then it has what's called options. So basically here, uh, one option is to remove all the missings, all the NAs, and that's NA period RM. NA RM is to remove the missings, and if you set that equal to true, all caps true, uh, that's basically gonna set that option to true, and what this means is, it's gonna find the mean of math, but it's gonna uh, remove the missing one. So let's see what happens now. Ah, 485.377. Pretty cool. Of course, you might have noticed that, wait, that's the same mean that I got earlier when I just did the summary thing, right? But now there's this other command similar to mean called SD for standard deviation. So now if I do the SD of math w with removing the NAs, oh, well, now I got the standard deviation as well which I didn't, of course, have originally. So that, that's one additional thing I get. Now, the point of all this isn't these specific commands, but it's just the way of thinking, right? If you ever discover a command or, or you want to execute a command, one thing to keep in mind is there's probably options that you can use with it. And you can use the help command with an R. So if I just do help, SD, let's see what happens. Ah, it's going it, to, it shows up here, help SD, running that shows the description of that variable, it's telling me how to use it, right? You can type NARM equals true or false, and in, in, this, in some cases, if there's other options to be put, if it's a more advanced command, it'll show all the different options. Some might have several different options to put, like with graphs, it's like, what's the color, what's the label, what's this, you know, you can do a bunch of stuff. Uh, so the next video is gonna be about making a graph or two and how to save that graph as well. Uh, and in order to do that, one thing we're going to look at is one of the built-in uh, data sets. So one thing is, so the star data set, that's something that we had, we loaded. But in addition to these, Stata also, uh, R also has a bunch of built-in data sets. One popular example is called MT cars. So if I do summary MT cars, let's see what happens. Oh, it gives me, it's summarizing all these variables within MT cars. And basically, uh, notice empty cars is not over here, right? So you might be puzzled at first, but again, it's built in. And so if you're running low on data sets, you can always use any of the built-in ones. If you check the FAQs of this module, you'll see a larger list of them if you wanted to play around. But in the next video, we're gonna talk about this data set and how to work with graphs.